facts are now clear in this country. Fact number one, President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta is not going to support William Samoy Arab Ruto for the presidency in August. And those who had uh, hoped that the president was playing Raila Molodinga, it is now clear that the president is going to support Raila Molodinga and that the president has betrayed his deputy, a person he promised to support in August 2022. So that's the first fact. The second fact which we can also not dispute is William Ruto's determination to become the next president of the Republic of Kenya. William Ruto is doing everything within his powers to become the next president of the Republic of Kenya. And you can see in this country today, he's already a front runner. The latest opinion poll, which I'm going to analyze tomorrow, puts him at slightly 46%, followed by Raila Molodinga. So William Ruto is determined. You can count the number of times William Ruto has toured parts of this country. Yesterday he was in Nairobi. Today he is in Machakos. So he's determined. The third fact is that William Samuel Ruto is currently an outsider in government. He's the deputy president, but what I can call deputy president without portfolio. In fact, there are cabinet ministers who are more powerful than William Ruto in this government. There are people like Murade who are not anything in government, but are more powerful than William Samayara Proto. And based on the fact that the president is against the deputy president, the deep state is against the deputy president, the fact that the deputy president is facing one of the serious presidential contenders, Raila Mulodinga, the deputy president has decided to craft a strategy of defeating President Ru Kenyatta and Raila Molodinga in 2022 elections, which is a few months from now. So in this video today, I want us to look at the strategies which William Samuel Ruto has actually crafted and using, and whether those strategies can defeat Raila Odinga and William Ruto, I mean Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta combined. For example, Raila Odinga yesterday, was it on Monday, stated that in Nairobi he got... Uh, 900,000 900, and Uhuru got 700,000. And according to Raila Odinga's calculation, he expects to retain those 900,000 votes he got in Nairobi and then add to Uhuru Kenyatta's votes. The deputy president hopes to surpass what the president got in Nairobi in the last election. But before we go into all those details, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, just click that subscribe button now. Because what we do on this channel is that we analyze politics in a way you can't find any other place. So the best thing you can do is just to click the subscribe button. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. I know most of you guys are asking where I'm getting my outfit. <laughs> just go to Nakumat. Ile yaka chok if you are in Kisumu. First floor. Then you will get a place called the, the gentleman's wear. You will be sorted. Now, William Ruto has devised strategies which he hope will, will help him stop President Ru Kenyatta and Rai Lodinga in their schemes. Entering into this election, William Ruto was a front runner because the only thing which was standing between the deputy president and the presidency was actually the remainder of President Uhuru Kenyatta's term. But in March, a few months after the election, Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga entered into the handshake. That handshake, in my view, is what managed to bring Raila Odinga back to the race. But I'm not again going to go into that for now. Probably if you need me to analyze why the handshake is what sustain Raila Odinga up to now, then I can do another video for later on. But for now, I want to explain to you guys the strategies which the deputy president has developed. The first strategy which he hopes to use is the power of money. The question is, who are William Ruto's opponents? Raila Odinga. Is Raila Odinga known to be using money in campaigns? Raila Odinga is not known to use money. Raila Odinga is known to use hope, selling hope to voters. 
And William Ruto realized that Raila Odinga supporters and those who have already supported Raila Odinga are tired now. And what they needed is money. So William Ruto came up and started using the money. And in fact, I don't know whether this is going to work in his advantage or not, but I'm using the case of, of, uh, of Kiambu, where the thicker town member of parliament, the jungle, quietly left UDA and is now going to run for the government. He will sit there as independent. This guy is saying that when he joined William Ruto, William Ruto made his defection a big deal. And they went and traversed the entire county. And at each and every stop, William Ruto would promise to give youths, women and um, women, youths and business people, some money, which he never did. So this guy ended up using his own, his own money to pay these youths, and that's why he left. And someone was also saying that people like Alice Wahome, Dindi Nyoro, who are key allies of the deputy president, are not comfortable with the deputy president going to their constituencies because they're incarnate. But the truth of the matter is that when you go to a place and you make a promise of two million to Boda Boda youths, what are you doing? What are you doing? Psychologically, people would think that you are giving a lot of money. I want to give you an example of Kisumu. William Ruto came to Kisumu. In Kondele, he stood up and promised Boda Boda guys 2.5 million. He went and promised women, I think at the end of the day, he, prom he made a promise of 4.5 million. So to Kenyans, the voters in Kondele received 4.5 million, which was enough, you know, when 4.5 million lands in Kondele in the hands of Boda Boda and uh, women there, that's quite a lot of money. But I've inquired, and what I got shocked me, this money was actually distributed to all border border operators in Nyanza. And each border border operator received 5,000. Is it 5,000 or 500? I think 500. Either 5,000 or 500. So the fact is, William Ruto was able to display money. And that money is what is attracting most young people to William Ruto. They hope and believe that by joining William Ruto, Going to his rallies, you get money. You've all seen in several instances where people like Oscar Sudi are giving money to Boda Boda guys ahead of William Ruto's rallies. So William Ruto intends to use money. And this is an act he acquired while he was in Kano. Whether he's going to succeed with that, I still don't know. His second strategy of, uh, and by the way, between Ruto, Uhuru, and Raila, for example, who has money? And why is Uru not using money? Why is Raila not using money? That's the question. And that's why anytime Raila Dinga tries to challenge Ruto over his money for church and the rest, he always tells them that Raila Dinga is a billionaire. Why can't he use? Most people now believe that William Ruto, as much as you call him a thief, but he's sharing. <laughs> so that's the first strategy, money. His second strategy is to capitalize on jubilee failures. The truth of the matter is that jubilee failed. And jubilee failed big time, especially in the first term. But in the first time term of their rule, what jubilee did was use of propaganda. Denise Tumbi went to an extent of even having a website which was called Jubilee Portals, where they were showcasing what jubilee government has done. The truth of the matter is that most of those projects which were listed on those, on those websites were fake. Most of them were never done. So after the elections, when Kenyans now came into their senses, they realized that Jubilee had failed. But William Ruto was gifted a gift. Uhuru Kenyatta entered into the handshake with Raila Mododinga. So William Ruto started running away from Jubilee failures and taking credit for Jubilee successes. And while that was happening, the burden of Jubilee failures was being transferred to Raila Mododinga. And that's the thing. So William Ruto came up with what he was calling uh, the hustler narrative. And um, that's another strategy which I'm going to, 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 to explain below. But his, the idea of hustler narrative was to create people 
a class between the poor and the rich. So what he wanted to do was now to appear as the Messiah, the guy who was going to sort out jubilee failures, if it was an unemployment, if it was road, if it was water, if it, anything. So William Ruto made capitalized on jubilee failures and he was able to convince the majority of Kenyans that indeed he's the economic messiah. He's the guy who will sort the unemployment in this, in this area, I mean in this country, the failure to provide clean waters, the failed healthcare system occasioned by corrupt governors, and the rest. So that was his second strategy. Jubilee failures. And that's why at some point Uhuru Kenyatta decided to remove him from launching government projects because he was claiming that the government had failed but going to a place to launch. And then the president tasked Matiangi and gave him one instruction. I want you to just identify projects which are ongoing. Complete them, then we can go. And that's why in the larger Mount Kenya region, William Ruto no longer blame Uhuru Kenyatta for Jubilee failures because the president went there, identified projects which were which had which had stalled, and the president decided to complete them. And today, the president can go to the larger Mount Kenya region and he can rise up and tell them, I've done A, B, C, D. Before that, in fact, that's why early campaigns has failed the DP. If he had started a bit late, President Ruhu Kenyatta and his government probably would have slept. They would not have fixed the mess which the president has done. So his second strategy is to capitalize on jubilee failures. His third strategy is to create a class war. William Ruto wanted to run as a hustler. Hustler means someone who comes from a poor background. And then he wanted to portray Raila Odinga as a dynasty. This was well before he was still with President Ruhu Kenyatta. Mutai Nguni crafted for him that strategy. But when Uhuru Kenyatta entered into a handshake with Raila Odinga, then it means Uhuru Kenyatta now became a dynasty. And probably the deputy president has managed to drop that tag. But the truth of the matter, William Ruto is using the hustler narrative. And the hustler narrative, when you talk of a hustler, you talk of someone who is hardworking. His party slogan is Kazi ne Kazi. So basically, the deputy president is targeting the unemployed, the poor, which are the majority, and is now the, appearing as the one, one of them who will be able to sort their problems. But he has dropped that hustler versus dynasty tag because I think he was advised that was divisive and probably in his camp, for example, there were dynasties, people like um, Caleb Kositani, for example, people like uh, Henry Kosgei, for example, people like Susan Kihika, for example, and there were so many other dynasties in that camp. So he had to drop that. And that's how he managed to come up with what is calling the bottom-up approach. So basically, he's accusing Uhuru, Raila, and the rest of using a strategy which is top-bottom, where you, you get national cake, you distribute somewhere here, but by the time it reaches down, it's, it's finished. So the class one. His fourth strategy is the UDA party. William Ruto wants to run as a national leader. Why is he doing this? Let me take you back a bit. In the last election, in 2013, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto contested under different parties, but they were in a coalition. URP, TNA. URP was predominantly Kalenjin party. TNA was predominantly Luya party. I mean, Kikuyu party. So in 2013, William Ruto realized that he was going to run in 2022. So he came up with a very bright idea of merging these parties and taking control of the party. So TNA and URP merged. And after they merged, William Ruto decided to take charge and manage the nominations. But Uru Kenyatta was keenly watching him. So the idea behind merging TNA and Jubilee Uhuru, I mean, William Ruto was keen on portraying himself as a national leader because he knows and understands so well that in this country, our politics is tribal. So Kenyans were going to ask that Akikuyu, president at the independence, Moi, Akalenjin, K 
kibaki akikuyu uhuru akikuyu then coming again a kalenji so kenyans had issues with electing another kalenji so he decided that he wanted to form a party which appeared as a national party so he came up after these guys took over jubilee he formed the uda party i want you to monitor uda the way it is structured the first thing they're doing is brand visibility so whenever the deputy president has an ally you'll always see yellow so today in this country anybody seeing yellow would always talk like if you go to a wedding and you see people donning yellow black as their favorite color you would just think that could be a uda event so he has managed to do that brand visibility then he went and formed the party and created national officials if you look at the national officials of jubilee Johnson Mudangama is the chairman akamba then veronica maina is the secretary general most people believe that veronica maina is actually a kikuyu veronica maina is not a kikuyu she's a kalenjin who is married to a kikuyu but now a custodian then you go further then you realize that he's making this party appear as a national party the other thing he has done successfully is to make uda appear as a kikuyu party and that's why is the departure of uh, of uh, girishi is really hurting them because girishi is now revealing some of the secrets they've made uda appear as a as a kikuyu party how did he manage to do this he told the kalenjins in that party to pull back then leave the kikuyus to sign to shine anytime they have events you will really see the kalenji nation leaders accompanying him you would see kikuyu majority majorly then you would see aisha jumwa you would see osoro just adding dwale so that the party appears as a national leader i mean as a national party and then he's now using his resources his mobilization skills because no politician can mobilize the ruto does using money and then when he goes to a place it's always mammoth so his strategy is to make uda a national party and after making it a national party then he cannot contest so nobody will ask william ruto as a kalenjin he will be viewed as a national leader his fourth strategy this video is going to be a bit long his fourth strategy basically is the church and his structures if you study the william ruto he has managed to convince the church that is the best bet he has managed to convince the church that is part of them william ruto has successfully managed to use the church structures to penetrate regions like for example you go to central kenya he has managed to go to all those famous churches and convince the people that is one of them he would always carry the bible pray you know in churches to an extent that Kenyans were really questioning whether William Ruto owns Jesus and God because he would always portray for example Raila Odinga as someone who doesn't go to church who doesn't contribute to church and Kenyans were asking whether he's the deputy in fact the truth is Kenyans are referring to William Ruto as the deputy Jesus <laughs> so he has money to use church structures but since covid and i think president also prevailed on churches not to play a lot of politics they reduced number 6 his sixth strategy is to appear as pro people moving forward you'll see william ruto defending the constitution in his entire life william ruto has never been known to be a defender of the constitution he was in kanu you all know what happened in kanu so today in this country Raila Odinga was supposed to ride on his reform credentials. William Ruto is now running with that. He wants to appear as the guy who is going to defend the people. Talk of the BBI and his running mouth. William Ruto can really dismantle. He dismantled BBI in the presence of Raila, in the presence of Uhuru Kenyatta. And BBI became a bad thing before Kenyans. So basically, he's appearing as someone who is out to defend the constitution, to defend the rights of Kenyans. Jimmy Wanjiki was arrested the other day yesterday the first people to defend Jimmy Wanjiki was uh, his people legal advisor Kipimo Murkomen and Murkomen was very clear in his defense 
that Jimmy Wanjigi is being persecuted by Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. And that's the, the, the line of thoughts they're likely to take. And lastly, his last strategy, which Uhuru Kenyatta has been unable to deal with, is the larger amount Kenya politics. William Ruto understood that he needed to get hold of Mount Kenya, then go to Nasa strongholds and penetrate. As we speak today in this country, as we speak today in this country, William Samoy Arap Ruto is controlling the larger Mount Kenya region. He understands that if Mount Kenya were to slip, he would be finished immediately. And William Ruto is also trying so hard to penetrate the former Nasa strongholds. He's going in Ukambani in the hope that those who are not comfortable with Kalonzo Musioka will have him as the alternative. William Ruto is going to the coastal region hoping that he can solve the problems which Raila Odinga is not able to solve or he can appear as an alternative. William Ruto is going to the larger Western Kenya in the hope that Western Kenya will be able to support his bid. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. Those are the strategies which William Samoy Arap Ruto intends to use and he hopes to defeat President Ruto Kenyatta and his project, what he called his project, Raila Amolodinga. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. And by the way, it's long since I made a 20 minutes video. You demanded, you have it. Bye-bye.